This isn't Back to the Future, this is TechCrunch TV, but we're still about to try out a real life hoverboard here at Arx Pax in Los Gatos, California. You can actually bounce a little bit on it. You can feel the like air and the, the magnetic field compressing underneath you. This is how a professional hoverboarder does it. Oh, we got the spin. This is the white box. It's the ArxPax developer kit, which will allow people to experiment with hover technology at home. Now I know it looks normal, but if you pick it up and flip the switch, it activates the hover technology, and magnets at the bottom of this box are reacting with magnets in or basically a copper table to create a repulsive magnetic field. And you can pick it up and see there's no fans on the bottom. It's just big magnets. And so it can move around and glide. There's almost no friction, it goes really quick, faster than a block of ice or something like that would. And you can even bounce it a little bit and the repulsive field will hold the, boxes, uh, the box and the table apart. And then we can just hit the little kill switch on here. Back, turn it off. And it falls back to earth. This summer, we'll, we're going to be releasing a video that kind of explains everything about the white box and our technology, but for now it's a big secret. It's a big secret. Tell me. Yeah, the the magic is, is remains magic for now. So this is the next version of the Hendo board technology. So tell us about it. So this version changes the magnetic field uh, in that we're using to generate lift, so that we can also generate propulsion. And we can use that propulsion when you link it with a microprocessor and some software to have some stability in control. And so that's the goal is to take this technology, the, the digital control with some you know, gyros and accelerometers, put that into the, the hoverboard, and then really create a, a special riding experience. So instead of just being like you go in basically whatever direction your momentum is going, you'll actually be able to control in which direction you're sort of driving. You can give input to the board and it will respond and move the way you want it to. So you have invented the hoverboard, but how did you first get into hover technology? When we came up with the idea, and you may have heard about our, our three-part foundation system and the origins of hover technology, the key component of that was something we call the buffer medium. A liquid, a gas, why not an electromagnetic field? So when we were trying to figure out in early testing, well, you know, how can we d demonstrate this technology in a way that everyone will understand? Bingo, hoverboards. How could you not think of the hoverboard when you discover hover technology, right? Exactly. But obviously it's a little bit less accessible for most people. Most people can hardly ride a skateboard, let alone a hoverboard. So do you see this as sort of the end goal of the technology or where are you hoping to, to see it uh, applied? This is the absolute beginning. And 10,000 is a lot to spend on anything, particularly a board. We want to get that technology where, like all technology, becomes more efficient. And as it becomes more efficient, it becomes cheaper. So have you been talking with other companies or are there other people that want to use your hover technology? The technology has obvious connections to transportation, but there's some not so obvious connections to thing, things like industrial automation, to clean rooms, to... Uh, space applications. Space applications. There are, it's, 
vast, the applications. And for the hoverboard, uh, at least your hoverboard, the closest thing is the boosted board, which is an electric powered skateboard. And I think they did a great job of using a sort of a throttle wheel and a trigger to allow you to control it while feeling like you're still really, it's really stable and safe. Um, you, you know, are there any, like when you ship this board, are you thinking like a wireless handheld remote or how, how do you expect people to be able to control the board? So that is one potential interface. And there's some others we're looking at too. The more easy the interface, I think the more challenging, or the more you can challenge yourself on what you want to do on it. So we want to enable people to really push the limits of the technology with regards to hoverboards. I think it's going to be a lot of fun.